Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is Shaparak Shajarizadeh. She's an Iranian activist. Uh, she's the author of a book that was just published here in France. I'll translate the title. It's uh, Freedom is Not a Crime. It's written with uh, Rima El Khoury. It's published uh, by Plon. Uh, and in it, uh, you recount your uh, journey from an upper middle class woman uh, living in Tehran to an activist against the uh, hijab, uh, the Islamic veil, which is mandatory in Iran. Obviously, uh, you were arrested and then you were sentenced to two years uh, in prison. However, before uh, the verdict was handed down, you decided to secretly flee Iran through Turkey and you now live in exile in Canada. I just have a very simple question. How does one go from being an upper middle class woman to an activist against the Islamic veil? Uh I was just uh, fed up with uh, living this double life, living a lie, and pretend everything is okay. For uh, many years, uh, we, fa uh, we faced violence. We were facing violence because of compulsory hijab. And the other thing is I, I knew uh, a little about a women's movement in West, uh, the suffragette movement. I was very fascinated by those women who made those changes, and now women in West can uh, use it, uh, and they have almost uh, the same rights as men and equality. And I realized that uh, those women were successful in their movements because they um, eventually they had the support of normal, ordinary women, uh, workers. And uh, in Iran, women's rights activists did their best for 40 years, but they didn't go anywhere because they didn't have the support of us. So when this campaign came, I realized this is the moment for me it to was join the so-called White Wednesday, Wednesday campaign. campaign. And the, the principle, if I just for our viewers, was to, to wear uh, white and film yourself. To wear white or to be unveiled in, in streets and send your message to the journalist who started the campaign. And the campaign was simply asking normal women and men to come forward and be their voice. So that was the moment for me um, to join the campaign and uh, civil disobedience and um, nonviolence um, campaign. Right, there was a, a turning point. Uh, however, it's in December of 2017, a woman uh, by the name of Vida Movaed goes in a very well-known uh, place in the center of Tehran, decides to take her veil off, put it on a stick, and this really uh, created quite a stir. And for you, this was a turning point, because this was not only about wearing white, it was taking the hijab and putting it on a stick. Sure. Um, for, 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 for a few months, everybody were talking about compulsory hijab, uh, protesting compulsory hijab, but that lady um, had, uh, like, um, she performed, uh, like, and she was uh, standing there, quietly uh, and sending a message to, gov uh, to the government, to the authorities, that I'm peacefully protesting this law. And it, it was very beautiful. For me, it was the most beautiful and peaceful civil in the, uh, disobedience in the world. Uh, and I was one of the first women um, who followed uh, her path. So you started doing uh, the same? The same, yeah. Uh, well, a few days after her. A few days, uh, quite a few times. And eventually what was bound to happen happened. You were arrested uh, by the police. You recount in, in the book uh, several of uh, those arrests uh, and also the humiliation, uh, the violence uh, in prison, also accusations of spying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I never went to that spot in the center of the city. I didn't want to get arrested. At the same time, I was I, I was um, I wanted other women and men to join our campaign, to see me um, um, in, in our in my neighborhood and join us. Um, but yeah, during the interrogation, I faced uh, most horrible things in the world. And the, the, the most um, scariest thing is uh, that you realize that they can do anything with you when 
uh, they capture you. You were uh, lucky, if I may say, because you were able to be defended by a well-known uh, lawyer, Nasrin Sotoudeh, uh, who defended you and uh, is now herself in jail for a very long time, or shortly after actually defending uh, you. But this allowed you to uh, have someone on your side telling you what to do, because I imagine there's a lot of intimidation and you don't know what to do when you face those situations. She was my only hope. Although I, um, I wasn't able to like talk to her or contact her during the time I was detained, but uh, she, um, the thing that she had done for me was to, uh, to brought the justice in public's eyes and told people about the things that had happened to me and to other women, also the, the other women. And, um, and uh, I owe my life to her, my family's safety and myself. Right. Uh, so you were arrested uh, three times and at some point you decide, because you have uh, a husband, obviously, you have a young uh, son, and you say in the book that you realize that if I stay, I'm going to die. And so you decide uh, to flee the country uh, through a smuggler into Turkey. And now uh, you're uh, in Canada. Do you regret leaving the country? Or was it the best decision you made? It's very complicated for me. At the same time, I'm able to advocate for women's rights and my, for my friends and my lawyer, which is great. But I'm, I'm not happy. I, I cannot enjoy freedom as much as I want because all, uh, all the thing, um, my mind is in Iran and uh, my heart is with my friends and my lawyer. Right, because I mean, the sentences, uh, maybe after you fled, have become harsher and harsher. There's this uh, group of women, those three women who decided on Women's Day last year to hand out flowers in the subway in Tehran, bareheaded. Uh, they were arrested and now they have very long sentences. Is it maybe a consequence of what you did? Uh, they were my friends. My close friend was, who was advocating for me during the time I was arrested was one of them, Mojgan Keshavars. Uh, but the old thing is uh, women uh, are getting braver, even though uh, they see that what they had done to me or other, other women. And, uh, and government wanted, uh, wanted to send a message to all the women, Iranian women. Uh, but at the same time, if you see the news, if you see the videos, you see, even though with 24, 23 years sentence, um, um, women are getting bolder and braver, and uh, they won't obey compulsory hijab, even though the, even though the police officers ask them, uh, they are um, telling to their face that, I don't believe in this law and I'm not obeying this uh, uh, sexual discrimination. Do you believe this is still going on or that the movement has been stopped because of the intimidation, because of other things? Not happening? like that. Not like uh, um, uh, it's not uh, like the girls of Angelob Street, but uh, but they are um, they are doing another campaign just to film, the, uh, just to make uh, record the op oppressors, record the police officers who uh, who wants to um, um, uh, arrest them. And they're brave enough. You, vote, you voted for Hassan Rouhani in 2013. You wouldn't do the same today. Of course not. Why not? Mm. The time I, I voted two, two years ago, I didn't believe in any reform, even back then. It was just because I was an animal supporter, and they promised to have this right for animals. But I was, I, I had believed in uh, reform uh, back uh, before 2009, and uh, I was one of the people who hoped that there are some uh, uh, changes. There's going to be some changes in the government. But after 2009 and the demonstration, uh, we realized there's not going to be any reform in my country. But and uh, people were just uh, voting uh, like choosing between the bad and the bad party and the worst party. But after uh, the demonstration in, um, in December 2017, when the reformist party killed people, killed innocent protesters, 
Um, and after that, in 2017, they, um, they suppressed all the uh, like, uh, act, uh, movements, labor movements, teachers' movements, women's movements. Uh, and also, last November, if you, if you saw this, hor this horrible news from Iran, they killed, um, um, ba uh, based on uh, Reuters reports, more than 1,500 um, protesters and um, uh, arrested thousands of people in just three days. So you see, there's no difference between the reformist or the, or the fundamentalist. I understand. Just last question, because we're running out of time. Uh, obviously, uh, you're now advocating regime change, and some are saying uh, that you're being used or uh, allowing yourself to be used by those, especially in the U.S., uh, pushing for regime change. Are you being used, do you I, think? I haven't been in touch with anyone from U.S., and this is the mindset of people that uh, think uh, women don't have a voice. This is me. I was always um, believing change and wanted change in my country with other Iranians, but I didn't have the chance. Now I have the chance, and you see this, the human rights situation, the violation of human rights are getting worse and worse in my country. Uh, uh, what am I supposed to do? Uh, like, do nothing? Now I have a platform as a human rights activist, as a woman rights ac activist, and I'm going to use that to just tell the world that these are happening in Iran. And open your eyes to the violation of human rights in Iran and uh, support the Iranian people and not the government. Thank you very much, uh, Shaparak Shajarizadeh, for coming on the France 24 uh, interview. Uh, your book is published in uh, French right now. Uh, it will be. Uh, probably uh, published in English at some point. Thank you very much for watching this interview. Stay tuned for more news. Thank you.